Yeah. That was a classic time in life. Um, I I can't remember what my uh, other job was. Oh, actually, it was probably when I was paddling. So I was an athlete. Yeah. Trying to be an athlete, which is obviously a low-paid job. Um, And on the weekends, I'd work at the AFL in the food vans, having a great time, working hard while it was half-time and quarter-time and all that, and then totally not working hard afterwards. Yeah. And getting to eat can a lot you, of the profits as well. Can you tell us a bit more <laughs> about eating that? Eating into a lot of the profits. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what was that final, that. final uh, the final routine of the evening that <laughs> yeah. you, you got so, stuck um, in there? So me and a mate who used to train quite a lot, we also used to eat quite a lot as well. So the two things went hand in hand. And, you know, if you have two guys all alone with the leftovers from an AFL game, you're, they're going to have a, a bit of a mess. So as soon as ever the final siren went... Um, We'd get rid of a few of the people that were just uh, drunk on their way out and then basically everything else was left to us to eat. So we'd just have a bite of everything, something like uh, the Dagwood Dogs. So we'd <laughs> we'd dip the Dagwood Dogs in the sauce, which was the best part, take one bite and then throw the rest away, <laughs> grab another one, dip it in the sauce, take the best bite, throw the rest away. Uh, so the top bit was the best bit? The top bit was the best bit. First bite's always the best of the uh, Dagwood Dog and the rest oh. is just, you know... Leftovers. Did did anyone catch on as to why there was you know <laughs> considerable fewer number of day with dogs no, at the I end think, of the no, day? No, or? it was uh, definitely back in the old days where there was no stock take, no cash <laughs> registers. It was just here's a heap of food and hopefully you sell it. Tell us how it goes at the end of the night. So we yeah. uh, took advantage of you that. You would have had to throw it out anyway. So oh, so totally. Yeah, it was. They were all cooked, so they were all just going in the bin. So we thought let's have a bit of fun with them and or eat them. On the yeah. way out, and there was all sorts of um, hot chicken rolls, um, chico, uh, chico rolls, oh, just, yeah, yeah, dim sims. spring rolls, dim That's sims, uh, every greasy piece of food you can have. Oh, I didn't mate. touch the uh, the chili chicken, though. That would have been a bit nasty. It, it sounds like the food of a world champion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't feel that well. A world next, champion though. in what, perhaps, yeah. right? Pete, you're a, you're a world champ. <laughs> yeah, Team yeah. Player. So, um, yep, yep. So in... Um, uh, to 1997, um, a team of us from Australia went over and we paddled against the Hawaiians and our Tahitians in the Outrigger Championships, which was in Molokai. So it's a big race from um, Molokai Island all the way to the um, the, the main island. How Hawaii. far is that? It's about uh, 56 kilometres. In the race, open ocean. Open ocean, yeah, open swell. So when you're in the middle of the channel, you can't see land that way or that way. And, wow. You know, there is uh, really large swells and there's also, um, you know, sharks and everything in there. Um, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty heavy race. It takes about, it took us about five and a half hours. And, and in the end, when everyone converged, we happened to be in the lead and held that lead till the end. So it was good for Australia because, you know, the, the Hawaiians and the Tahitians, that's their, their national pride and national mm. sport. So we um, came out of the stole blue that from them. Stole that from them. But it was a lot of hard work in the in the lead up to it. A lot of early winter mornings at four thirty, tra- training and then doing you know training sessions from Coolangatta to Surface Paradise. You know for many long weekends. So mm. some of the luxuries of what you can do when you're a bit younger and you don't mm. have a, a business and you don't have kids. Yeah. Well, I've actually seen the Channel Nine Wide World of Sports kind of. Uh, episode that show, highlighted you know that that uh, victory that you guys had which was pretty pretty impressive so uh, definitely uh, something to be proud of and to show your kids when uh, yeah. when they, uh, they grow up have they seen it um, they see a little bit of it but you sort of they don't really understand what they're seeing but I think yeah. as they get old and they understand it a bit more they'll, they'll mm-hmm. love it they're still you know not quite sure what world championship means um, I mean you can sort of say hey you know daddy was in the Guinness Book of Records but then they'll go and try and look for it in the Guinness Book of Records. So, but that's the only real way to explain, you know, you, you beat everyone in the world in that particular year. Yes, you know. yes. What got you into that? Um, probably just, you know, general sports. So when I left school, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. So um, I was a kayak paddler. So I got a scholarship with the Australian Institute of Sport um, straight out of school. So instead of, you know, going into a job, that was my job. Probably did that for three or four years. So just being around that the whole time. Outriggers is a almost like an off-season sport that you do. So a lot of the guys who would paddle skis and kayaks, they'd do outriggers in the off-season. So we just, it was just a, a natural sort of progression into a different sport. Mm. Um, and then, you know, everyone would train just as hard as they were training in the summer months on their chosen sports. Um, and that's probably why we also were able to, um, to excel so much because it just happens to be, you know, six guys who are all uh, really mm. fit at the peak. 
um, all together um, racing on that particular year. So we'd gone, we went in 1995 and got fifth. So, you know, we, we sort of um, felt the, the pain of, you know, not being on the dais and, mm-hmm. and coming fifth and going a long way and training in winter and not actually going that well. So, you know, the next time we were definitely more prepared and I think that's like with everything, you know, you, you do something once and you learn from your mistakes and you, you come back harder, bigger and better the next time. <laughs>